Hi everybody. This is Linda with Linda Soup Plants for you. Um, this is going to be a rather short video today. I just wanted to uh, fulfill a promise that I made to one of my viewers. And <clears throat> her name is Sharon. So Sharon, this is for you. And as you said in the comment section, you're, you're absolutely correct. I'm sure that this will benefit uh, other viewers as well. So I'm happy to do it. Um, Sharon had asked me if I could do a video, obviously, on the products that I use um, on a daily basis for insect control. So that's what this is going to be about. And just before I get started on that, I just want to say that um, I want to give a shout out for a new YouTuber. Her name is Chris Pyle. And her uh, YouTube channel's name is Chris's Garden Pile. So, kind of clever play on words there. Um, welcome to YouTube, Chris. I'm so glad you finally made it. Uh, Suzette and I have been, you know, kind of hinting, hinting around. and Well, I have been, and I know Suzette's done more than that. Um, trying to um, encourage her. Uh, because we knew that she had something to add to the plant community. And if you all go look at her, her her video that she just did, you'll see what I'm talking about. She's got a beautiful setup, a beautiful home, and um, she's also got a lot of beautiful plants. And she has some, some pretty, I think, insightful things to add to the community from a woman's point of view and uh, her independence and how she gets through life and I'm excited to hear more about it, and I'm, I'm hoping that uh, those of you that are watching this video will help us to um, uh, support her channel. Okay, so, all right, <clears throat> let's get started here. Now, you'll see a few plants, well, you may or may not see a few plants behind here in the background. Um, these are plants I still have to repot and treat and the process is um, well, I'm dealing with thrips for those of you that haven't seen my previous videos I had a very bad infestation of thrips and I have been dealing with it now for several months it's exhausting to say the least but I think that I'm toward the end of the train here I'm hoping so hoping um, one thing that's important when you get something that especially a house plus pe house plant pest that flies it's really important to get it early and although I did see telltale signs of insect damage I wasn't sure I thought maybe it was uh, you know I don't know what I thought but I, I never in a million years thought thrips the way that we found out was <clears throat> my husband took a magnifying power lens from an old camera and he looked at the at the bug, and we actually identified it. They're very, very tiny, hard to see with the naked eye. So, <clears throat> anyways, <clears throat> the products that I'm going to talk about today are very few. Um, <clears throat> I think maybe <clears throat> I'll start with my home remedies. I did also have someone, uh, it was Sefcat, one of my followers, that um, had suggested that I watch, watch a, a certain person's video because it, uh, it was a more orga organic way of, of, you know, going the organic route. Well, <sighs> I'm not quite sure how to address that because I I don't want to make this about organic versus systemic. What I will say in short to that is I have tried many uh, so-called organic, less harmful, safer, what have you kind of remedies and in the past none of them have proven to work a hundred percent. They will cut down, for instance, spider mites um, or um, mealybugs 
I saw a video the other day, I believe she was on her fifth week of dealing with mealybugs on the same plant. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that, and I'm not saying that that won't eventually work, but I don't have the patience for that. And, folks, I've got nearly 300 plants here. I've lost a few to the thrips, but I've got a lot of plants, so I, that's not even a, a feasibility for me. If I get an insect in my house plants, I've got to deal with it quickly or take a chance on losing my whole collection, which I, I'm really not willing to do. Um, and she was doing the neem oil and the, I believe, the alcohol spray and what have you, and that that's okay, but that does nothing for the, um, the eggs and the larvae. And depending on what pest it is, some of those are even difficult to kill with a systemic. And I should say at the outset that I've read on, in doing a lot of research on thrips, I did read that um, thrips can become um, immune to whatever you use to kill them. So that's really scary. So that brings me to the next thing I want to talk about before I introduce these products. Suzette from Suzette's Gardens has told me for several years now that her method has has been when she buys a plant and brings it home she takes it apart she rinses the roots she she look, inspects the plant very closely she repots it in her fresh soil or water if need be whatever whatever the plant looks like it requires at the time and um, she she sprays the foliage with neem oil and as far as I know, I don't think she's ever had a serious outbreak. I know she's had a few outbreaks of, I think she had white flies the end of one summer, which she said that was the first time she ever had to deal with those. And so no matter what we do, uh, I guess there no method is foolproof. If you've got growing living things, whether they're houseplants or vegetables or flowers, you're, you're bound to have an issue now and then. Um, <clears throat> but... Her method seems to work very well for her, and I think, you know, I had said in one of my previous videos that I'm going to go back to putting my plants in a plastic bag when I leave the store. Most, most uh, plant stores have them. I know at Stein's Garden Center, they have clear plastic bags, and I have saved some of those because they're big. And when I get the plant home, I put it in the plastic bag, and I keep that plastic bag tucked tied and keep it separate from the rest of my plants. Now I have done this for many many years and I never had I never brought a plant pest home. But having said that we have pests today that we just didn't have back then and I do believe a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're uh, bringing a lot of plants in from overseas and doing a lot of plant trading, so there's a lot of movement around of these these plants and their babies, uh, the, the, the pests and the eggs and, and the larvae. So I guess you have to choose whatever you think is best for you. Um, personally, I think the bag method works very well because you don't have to do anything, and I do believe that it sets the plant back a little bit. It doesn't kill it. She's, Suzette has never killed a plant from taking it apart and repotting it when, as soon as she got it home. But I believe in my heart that it does set the plant back a little bit. Um, and because it, it, it's shock, you know, it's a shock value. It's, the atmosphere has changed and it's got to get used to that new atmosphere. And I say that because I see that even with plants that I just move from one room to another some plants are much more sensitive to that so that would be the only downfall I could see but like I said she's never lost one so or damaged one or had any you know negative results that I'm aware of so that's another method if you do all those things or any of those things and they don't work and you're unlucky enough to end up with a pest problem that's where these come in now <clears throat> this is a this is I got from the dollar store years ago. Um, this I put on here, fungus and fungus gnats. It's one part 
hydrogen peroxide, nine parts water, and a few drops of dish soap to make it stick. That is that is what I'm using. Or I should say that is what I used to use. And that's also what I still use if I'm not sure if I have a problem. But something's quite not right. And I don't want to take a chance. Then I will spray this on my on my plant. And it's never, it's never hurt any of them. The alcohol I use is 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol. I get that also at the Dollar Tree. So very inexpensive, right? And then I also have this mixture. This is, I have pesticide on there just so that I know it's the alcohol. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I did this, I did this wrong. <laughs> no, well, maybe not. Okay. This is the uh, hydrogen peroxide, and this is the alcohol. I hope I didn't confuse. I'm so sorry if I did. Okay, and this too. I've got one part alcohol, nine parts water, a few drops of dish soap. This one is the same. Is the same. One part... H2O2 and nine parts water and a few drops of dish soap. Um, these they are foliar sprays. Okay, these you, you spray your leaves with these. And um, the hydrogen peroxide is good for other things. It also adds oxygen to your soil, which the plants need. So I know that there's a lot of uses for this in the plant world. And you might want, if you want to hear more about this type of product, you just just um, type it in the YouTube search bar and you'll see a lot of plant moms and dads with different methods and different uses for that. Okay. Now, for the nasty stuff, or I, I say the scary stuff, um, when I got this case of thrips, as I said earlier, I, I was devastated when I found out what they were because I, I when I read how fast they can ravage a plant collection, I was panic stricken. Um, ideally, when you use this method, it, sh it should all be done as quickly as possible. Um, if you can treat all your plants in one day, that's ideal. I obviously don't have the uh, health to be able to do that. So I had to spread mine out, and I think that's why it's taking as long as it is. If you're able to do this method with your all of your plants within a day, you know, 24 to 48 hours of each other, and then you repeat that same process in 10 to 14 days, because that's how long it takes for those eggs to hatch. Um, that's that's the best way to do it. But however you have to do it, you're going to do it your the way that you're able. Um, the products that I use here are this. This is this is the spray. Captain Jack's Dead Bug. This is great stuff, and it says right on the front of it, for organic gardener. It kills all kinds of insects, um, gypsy moth, caterpillars. Bloopers, leaf miners, spider mites, uh, tent caterpillars, thrips, and more. So that's just a few. There's there's a whole bunch that are named in here, and then on the back you can see there's a there's a instructions for use, and it tells you how much to use. The usage on this is this is a 32 ounce bottle. My husband first brought this home, and I quickly realized this wasn't going to be. <laughs> Nowhere near enough for me to treat my whole plant collection. I ran out in a hurry. So he went and he got me the concentrate. And that's, and that's okay because I, I have the bottle here. Um, so this was a little more expensive. I want to, I can't remember what the price of this was. Nine, ten, eleven dollars, twelve dollars, maybe somewhere in there. And I think this might have been closer to twenty. And that too depends on where you get it. But one tablespoon of this to this filled with water, 32 ounces. So I use, 
my little funnel. When this is getting starting to get low on the bottom there where it's not spraying out properly, I'll pour it in an old cottage cheese container that I'm gonna throw away and I and I leave that in there and then I mix a new batch in here and then when this starts to get low then I use my funnel and I add it back in there so I'm not wasting. So that's how I do that. And like I said, this uh, one tablespoon per 32 ounces of, of water. Okay. This spray, you spray the foliage, the leaves, front, back, stems, um, intersections. You want to make sure that you get every nook and cranny. Soak it down with this and just leave it sit on there. You don't wipe it off, you don't rinse it off, you just leave it on. And uh, once it's dry, then I go to my, this product, and I'm showing you both of these because up until now, they've always had this orange cap, now they're making it with the, I'm sorry, purple. How do I look at purple and say orange? Uh, uh, okay, so the, it may have either one of these caps. There's no difference between these two products. This one I've had for a little while. This is brand new. And my husband picked up three of them for me. Thank God. Um, systemic Houseplant Insect Control. That's what it's called. This too has instructions on the back. You can open this up. There's a whole booklet. Um, I will tell you with this product here. This one is open. I will tell you with this product, I do not use near as much as it calls for. Um, I, I, I sprinkle, once I do the foliage with the spray, and that's dry on the leaves, not dripping down in the soil, then I sprinkle a little bit of this in there, and I do that with this. And I get this from the Dollar Tree. I've had this for a long time. It used to have a cap on it, but I cut the cap off, and I actually made the hole a little bigger on the top. These are in the picnic aisle. They're two for a buck. Uh, like I said, I've been using it for a few years now, and it works great. They don't really wear out, and they're, they don't break. This is a systemic, though. You need to be very careful when you're using this product. You don't want to use this, and then as it's squirting out of here, it makes a little dust. Don't breathe that in. Either put a, a towel over your face or a, a mask, and most people have one nowadays, right? <laughs> Unfortunately. And then walk away. Once, once I fill this, I walk away for a little bit and make sure it's out of the air and I'm not breathing it in. Because it is a st systemic. It's a poison. And uh, no different than a lot of our cleaning supplies and other things, you know, it, but for me, it's a necessary evil. So just use it with common sense and with caution. You know, don't don't rinse it out down your drain and get it in the groundwater. And just be careful with it. You treat it like you would anything else that that is a chemical. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So that's about it on those. That's. Uh, and as I said, I started to say, I just sprinkle a little of this on top of the soil. And then I cover it with my worm castings. And let's see if I can show you that. This is my uh, earthworm castings. It's made by... And co. Why do I use that? Many years ago, I went to with a friend plant shopping back in the 70s, early 70s. And she had a plant store that was humongous. It was a uh, and abandoned or, or whatever. She was renting out a, an old car dealership and it's windows from floor to ceiling and ceiling is, you know, 20 feet high. I mean, a perfect, perfect place to have a plant store. And it was packed full with these 
huge, huge plants. Um, I purchased a, uh, a golden pothos from her. And at the time it was about mm, four and a half, five feet maybe tall. And that's the one I used to have in my living room that grew up to almost 14 feet. And uh, I'm not going to go into that whole story right now. But uh, that's one of the plants that I purchased from her. And when I asked her, I, I said, would you mind sharing with me um, your, your key to your big luscious plants and how you get them to grow so big? And she said, Worm poop. And I wasn't sure if I heard her right. And I said, excuse me, did you say worm poop? She said, yeah, worm poop. And I laughed. <laughs> and I said, worm poop, okay. And where do you get the worm poop? She says, you buy it in the store. I sell some here if you want some. I was like, sure, I would love some. And, uh... She said it's called worm castings, and it's just uh, the waste, the worm's waste, body waste. She said, and it makes excellent fertilizer. So I bought some, and sure enough, I came home and put it on my existing house plants, and boy, did they take off. So earthworm castings, folks, it's a good product. Uh, I use it about once a month, and yes, I do use it in conjunction with my Jack's uh, not. Synthetic fertilizer, and I do use synthetic. I tried using organic fertilizer, and I had all kinds of issues. I ended up burning some of my plants, and I i don't know if it's just because they weren't used to it. I don't know. Or mixed with distilled water, didn't like it. I don't know what the deal is. I know people that use nothing but organic fertilizer, and they swear by it. Mine was uh, the... Um, Espoma fish, fish fertilizer. So it was a good product, and I did it according to directions, and I tried it several times, and each time I did, I my plants acted up. So I stopped using it, and I guess it's possible I got a bad batch, but I, I'm not willing to take that chance again. So I went back to my, what used to be called Peter's. It's now called Jack's, and... Uh, that's what I use. So I use the, the Jack's fertilizer. I use one quarter strength. So if it calls for a teaspoon, I use a quarter teaspoon per gallon of water. And uh, every other time I use the worm casting. So, you know, once a month I use the fertilizer, once a month I use the worm castings. You can fertilize a little more than that during growing season, but my plants are getting to sizes that I am starting to run out of room so I really I'm not in a hurry for them to get real big real fast so the more you fertilize the faster and bigger your plants are going to get okay so I hope this has helped um I don't remember if I said but these these uh the granules are for the soil they will kill the larva and eggs and things in the soil um and then you have your foliar spray and if if just want to do something as a maintenance, or if you have something that's less invasive, um, for instance, uh, mealybugs, if I get mealybugs, and I've only had them, I think, twice, which, knock on wood, I'm, I'm feeling very fortunate about that. If I saw, see a mealybug, I just take a cotton swab with my rubbing alcohol, and I, I hit that, that bug, and if it turns colors, I know it's a mealybug. If it's something else, it won't turn colors. And I've had them turn all different colors. Orange, red, brown, um, kind of a reddish brown. So they, they will turn, just take the, the, the uh, Q-tip and touch it on that white, little white speck that looks like perlite. And uh, if it dissolves and turns color, you know you got mealybugs, most likely. Um, <clears throat> so... In that case, I will come with the alcohol. Okay. I mean, I can use this or this. So, it, it really doesn't matter. I, I would prefer to save this for the for the really scary bugs, but it, it doesn't matter. 
uh, the alcohol will, will also kill the mealybugs. So, I don't think I forgot anything. I hope that this helped you, Sharon. And um, if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And if anybody watching here has ever had to deal with thrips, I'd love to know how you treated them and how you got rid of yours. And again, I'm, I'm all for using the organic methods first, if that works. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't always work. And I'm not willing to, to risk my whole plant collection uh, to, to be able to say I'm organic. It's, it's kind of like a vegetarian, you know. I, I'm not a meat eater, and it's, it's not... It's not by choice of, of has it doesn't have anything at all really to do with being a ve vegetarian or vegan or vegan or whatever they call themselves. I don't, I don't uh, aspire to any of that, but I do have um, a, a, just a natural aversion to meat. Always have, even as a child. I grew up in a family of five, and everybody was so grateful that I didn't want that last pork chop, <laughs> I would have rather had another bowl of kohlrabi. So I, we grew up with fresh vegetables out of our garden. We had like three different kinds almost every night on our table. And uh, we were all pretty healthy for most of our life. So I guess I'm, I, I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, a real hard stickler for uh, organic products that you have to, that's all you can use but definitely try that first because the less chemicals we put in our body and on our earth the better so try this it, it's I swear by it I I hope I never have to live without this I will always want to have a bottle of that on hand and like I said it works on spider mites too so I know a lot of people are dealing with those right now and that's this is another great Great product, but remember, you've got to get something in the soil. You know, you can use this on the leaves and then put a little bit of alcohol in the soil. That might do it. Um, it's certainly not going to hurt the plant. Uh, I do believe that hydrogen peroxide also does kill some insect eggs. So, like I said before, that's something you might want to research. But anyways, I've been talking way too long here. I hope this has helped you all. I hope you all have a great Sunday, what's left of it. And uh, please do go visit um, Chris's Chris Garden Pile. Chris's Garden Pile. That's the name of the channel of the new YouTuber. I'm sure she would appreciate the uh, thumbs up and the viewers. Let's give her let's give her some encouragement, okay? We've all been where she is, and and I'm sure she could use some a little uh, support from us, okay? All right. Well, you all have a good day, and I'll be back soon. Um, I've come back for just a second because I forgot to mention this part, and this is important. This is a fly strip. It's made by Raid. They're ugly as ever. They're gross looking. I, I, I really hate to even get near them. I, they're just so gross. But they work. They come in little tubes like this in a box of eight or ten for like two bucks. But and I don't know if you can see here, but <laughs> there are a number of thrips on here. They're they're, they're tiny. All they are is dark spots on this picture. Um, but this is a new strip that we just put up uh, not even a week ago. These are LED lights. They're brighter than what you can see in the camera. These get the flying ones. So if, they, if they're not on a plant when you're spraying it or if when you spray it they fly off, um, chances are they're going to come to this light now at night I, I have this light on here this is my bathroom and I put 
the night light on with this strip in here and they'll come in, they'll come to this room because it's the only light on in the house and they will get stuck on that strip so that was an important thing I wanted to add uh, <clears throat> I got that at I think the last box we got at Home Depot I'm almost positive and uh, it's over by the other you know insect control things in that aisle so just be very careful not to get that glue on anything it's extremely sticky if you do get it on um, lighter fluid takes off just about anything sticky so get yourself a cheap can of lighter fluid should have it in the house anyway it takes off gum and takes off labels hard to get labels off of things it works great um, and so does baby oil that also works but I would go for the lighter fluid and that'll if you do get this on your hands or in your hair or on the wall or anything it'll take it off but okay now I am done bye bye